Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa arrived yesterday in the region of Al Dhafra on a private visit to the UAE. His Majesty was received by the ruler's representative of the region, His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Zayed Al Nahyan. His Majesty was also received by UAE Ambassador to Bahrain, Sheikh Sultan bin Hamdan bin Zayed Al Nahyan, Sheikh Mohammed bin Hamdan bin Zayed Al Nahyan, Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan bin Hamdan Al Z bin Zayed Al Nahyan, Sultan Khalfan Al Rumaythi, Court Under Secretary of the Rulers Representative in the Region of Al Dhafra UAE Red Crescent President's Advisor, Isa Hamad Bushhab. Ahmed Mutar al Dahri, Office Director of the Rulers Representative in the region of Al Dhafra, Bahrain's Ambassador to the UAE, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah bin Ali bin Hamad al Khalifa, and other senior officials. His Majesty the King was accompanied by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa al Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad al Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad al Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad al Khalifa, and other members of the accompanying delegation. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with His Holiness Pope Francis at the Apostolic Palace in the Vatican City States. His Royal Highness conveyed the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, wishing the Vatican City State continued progress and prosperity. He emphasized that Bahrain's development is closely aligned with the Kingdom's deep-rooted values of diversity and coexistence, principles that ensure unity in the Kingdom's multicultural society. His Royal Highness noted that the growing bilateral ties with the Vatican City State stand as a testament to His Majesty the King's determination to promote peaceful coexistence and aligning the Kingdom's commitment to interfaith dialogue. His Royal Highness commended Pope Francis for spreading the message of peace and coexistence, noting that these principles are building blocks through which societies can thrive. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince also met the Vatican Secretary of State, His Eminence Cardinal Pietro Parolin. His Royal Highness stressed the importance of further strengthening relations with the Vatican City State, noting the Kingdom's commitment to interfaith understanding and cultural diversity. He highlighted that the Kingdom's diverse society has embraced all religions and faiths and is a reflection of His Majesty the King's far-reaching vision of peace and harmony. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince officially inaugurated the Embassy of the Kingdom of Bahrain in Rome. He noted that the inauguration of Bahrain's Embassy marks a new milestone in bilateral relations, which have continually deepened over the past 50 years. His Royal Highness identified Bahrain's Embassy in Rome as a new platform for collaboration, noting that the mission would promote a stronger trading partnership between the two countries. He highlighted the concerted efforts of Bahrain's diplomatic engagements and Bahraini diplomats, which expand the, bah the Kingdom's international network, strengthen cooperation with friendly nations, and drive national development. His Royal Highness underlined the Kingdom's determination to work closely with its Italian partners to broaden collaboration at all levels. His Royal Highness then unveiled a commemorative plaque marking the official opening of the embassy. 
The delegation accompanying His Royal Highness consisted of the Secretary General of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation of Italy, Ambassador Elisabetta Belloni, and a number of Italian officials also attended the inauguration ceremony. Deputy Prime Minister His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at the Bia Palace. Following the session, Secretary General Dr. Yasser al Nasser issued the following statement. On the occasion of the BDF Day, the cabinet congratulated His, Ma His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and all BDF officers and affiliates. They hailed His Majesty's support, which resulted in a qualitative shift in the BDF's performance and noted its efforts in protecting the kingdom. The cabinet praised its, the outcomes of the official visit of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince to Italy, the discussions he held with senior Ita Italian government officials, and the MOUs and agreements which will be signed to develop cooperation in the political, commercial and economic fields to serve joint interests. They also praised the depth of relations between the two countries and their keenness to support and enhance them. On the occasion of the National Sports Day, the Cabinet decided that February 11th will be half a working day in all ministries, government bodies and institutions to allow empl employees to participate in its activities. The meeting reviewed regional and international developments and the results of the extraordinary session of the Council of the Arab League at the ministerial level, where they welcomed its closing statements which supported the Palestinian cause and affirmed upholding peace as a strategic choice to resolve the conflict and noted the Trump peace plan as a starting point for negotiations within an international framework. It also expressed appreciation to the U.S. for its efforts to resolve the Palestinian cause and welcomes all international efforts that aim to achieve fair peace in the occupied Palestinian territory territories to reach an agreement that will achieve the legitimate rights of the brotherly Palestinian people and an independent Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital in accordance with the principle of a two-state solution, international legitimacy resolutions, the Arab Peace Initiative and certified international references. The cabinet reiterated the kingdom's firm stance on the Palestinian cause and its support for all efforts and initiatives that lead to a just and comprehensive solution. The cabinet also followed up on the efforts of the precautionary measures being implemented to prevent the arrival of the coronavirus and stressed the importance of proceeding with the strict preventive measures and decided to take new steps to prevent the infection from reaching Bahrain by forming a team to address the risk of infection headed by the President of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and coordinate with the National Disaster Management Committee in this regard. Following the directives of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa to implement four education services projects in Muharraq and Hamad Town, the Cabinet followed up on the projects following a memoranda referred by the Minister of Education. The Cabinet also followed up on completing the education services needs of Barbar in order to achieve the Ministry's 2020 to 2030 goals to meet the education needs and maintenance across all governorates. The Cabinet discussed development projects, including roads, construction and maintenance projects, supervised by the Ministry of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning. 
The cabinet approved amending real estate lease law 27 of 2014 and canceled the rental disputes committee and referred it to the representatives council. The cabinet approved amending court of cassation law and referred the draft law to the representatives council. The cabinet approved the kingdom's hosting of a regional seminar on the future of education in the Arab world in March the 22nd in partnership with the Ministry of Education and the UNESCO. The cabinet approved a draft MOU on a cooperation agreement with the UAE in the area of food security to develop an, the existing relations between the two countries and enhance the agricultural field. The cabinet approved including multiple sclerosis within the categories of chronic diseases and provides specialized doctors and health centers in this regard. Under the patronage of the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fazi Yazena, the International Inspiration Economy Scientific Conference was held this morning under the title Creating Legacy in Times of Crisis, gathering speakers from around the world. More on this report with Abab al -Ghaffar. Attracting academics and researchers from more than 34 countries, the Inspiration Economy Scientific Conference focuses on the latest developments in research, practical and scientific tools through sustainable development projects that improve the role of people in all its different groups, aiming to start up real changes in our societies by having passion, intentions and exploration. The society was established uh, regarding the inspiration, economy, uh, method and way of thinking that we try to apply it all over the world and Bahrain was the main hub that we are trying to apply it. The main thing is about the research and having uh, published research. That this is our belief in inspiration economy. You can create inspiration currency instead of dollar. And uh, the idea also is that this, uh, this is like goes through a path. This path is very challenging. You sometimes you'll feel you are too, too much uh, challenged that you feel that you cannot continue this path. But this is the, the, the path of legacy. It needs persistence, it needs perseverance, it needs actually passion. The sessions and the themes of the conference were thoughtfully developed and tested to emphasize on the techniques and methodologies of creating legacy and impact by different parties in the community, focusing on the social economic issues and their implications. The conference also is followed by special workshops that help to enhance the delegates' capacity to manage risks in different times or even develop opportunities that raise the level of determination to create a differentiation globally. I'm expecting a lot from this conference because we really need such an event which gave us uh, direction how to develop uh, the communication between different countries, different nations and how to create a legacy that actually could help us to build a strong and sustainable economy of our countries. Economic development will be uh, in harmony with the social development because uh, what I see as a business student and business teacher that because of the economic pressure our social fabrics are going to be you know, shattered or broken. But uh, in this economic frame I, I believe that we can uh, maintain a balance. And that is precise, precisely the reason that I am here. I am, I am not only presenting, I basically I am here to learn. New possibilities, how can young people find a uh, future in the other ways, not uh, only with economy, classical economy or classical education, but with new models, because we need new ways for development, because globalization, because a lot of problems in the world today. All the scientific papers adopted at the scientific committee of the conference are going to be published in the peer-reviewed journal, including the International Journal of Inspiration and Youth Economy and the International Journal of Youth Economy. Creating legacy in times of crisis addresses the societal deficiency in the concept and methodology of the creation of impact and legacy, especially in times of increased capitalist economy and globalization. Heba Abdel Ghaffar, Bahrain International. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, conveyed the highest gratitude to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, over the support they extend to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, enabling it to fully perform its duties in a way that contributes to the consolidation of the relations of the Kingdom with the countries of the world. 
The Minister of Foreign Affairs expressed his deep appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for his inauguration of Bahrain's embassy in Rome on the sidelines of His Royal Highness's official visit to it Italy. The Minister of Foreign Affairs affirmed that the inauguration of the embassy reflects the strength of bilateral ties and their progress on all levels. The Ministry of Education began receiving applications for registering students who were born from October 2013 to August 2014 to enroll as first grade students in the next school year. The Minister of Education, Dr. Majid Naimi, visited the registration hall at the Ministry in Isa Town where he was reassured about the course of work and listened to the parents' feedback on registration procedures. The minister noted that the ministry provided enough teams to facilitate the registration process, asserting the commitment to provide a seat for each child who have reached the compulsory school age. The Minister of Work, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning, Islam Khalaf, along with Representatives Council Member Adil Asumi, toured Block 307 in Hura to follow up on the project of building a garden there. The minister is carrying on its, on its implementation of the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince in coordination with the Council of Representatives. The directives have pushed a number of development projects to improve government services to the citizens, which is in line with the comprehensive development vision of His Majesty the King. The minister said that the tour aims to increase the size of the green spaces in Bahrain and to offer more means of recreation for the residents of the area. Khalaf affirmed that all efforts that are being carried out to improve government services are aimed to meet the needs and aspirations of the citizens. The Minister of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning met the affiliates of the fifth batch of the First Deputy Prime Minister Fellowship Program in a discussion session that is part of the development program prepared by the Office of the First Deputy Prime Minister, which is one of the leading programs by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince in preparing national youth cadres. The Minister hailed the support of the program to national cadres and the skills it provides them with to become qualified, ambitious leaders. The minister reviewed the goals of the ministry and the most important work mechanisms. The minister of works expressed pride in youth energies, expressing hope that they benefit from the opportunities available to them. The FDPM fellowship program affiliates expressed thanks and appreciation to the minister for the explanation he provided on the nature of the ministry's work and strategies. Under the patronage of National Security Advisor and Commander of the Royal Guard, His Highness Major General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, a reception and honoring ceremony was held for members of the Bahrain Defense Forces Special Day Duty Force Group participating in the Saudi led Arab Coalition Restoring Hope Operation in Yemen. His Highness deputized the Deputy Commander of the Royal Guard, Major General Hamad Khalifa Naimi, to present the medals awarded by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander, to BDF officers, non commissioned officers, and staff in appreciation of their dedicated efforts, loyal contributions, and great role in standing with their brothers. And Naimi hailed the hon honorees' commitment to defending what is right, as well as their high morale, level of professionalism, and sense of discipline in carrying out their mission. The reception ceremony was attended by a number of senior BDF officers.